brink of controlling one of the major diseases affecting world health. We do have the research scientists, we do have the knowledge, and I think we can beat Alzheimer's disease. Inflammation is a very complex set of body processes that are geared to attack, identifying, attacking, and removing foreign invaders and objects from your body, uh, abnormal materials in your body. So having inflammation get loose in your brain is a very major concern to every neurologist and neurosurgeon. Inflammation in the Alzheimer's brain essentially begins with what you see right here. This is uh, a picture taken through a microscope. It's very, very like what Alois Alzheimer's saw back in 1906 when he looked in his microscope at little sections of the brain of one of his demented patients, Auguste D. And used, he used a, a stain very similar to this one, and he saw black freckle-like things all over the thinking parts of the brain. When he looked at areas of the brain that were involved in movement, he didn't see them. But in the higher centers of the brain, he saw millions of these black freckle-like things. We now know that these are made up of a molecule called amyloid beta peptide. They're highly, highly insoluble. And so when I, I first looked at this, I said, gosh, it just looks like somebody took some mud or dirt and just threw it at the cortex and hit it everywhere. Surely that would stimulate inflammation. But the dogma was that, that you couldn't have inflammation in the brain. It was immunologically privileged. And so uh, I went ahead and looked anyway. And I got a, a chemical that stains things that are involved in active inflammatory response. And that's exactly what I saw. I saw thousands and thousands of little wiggly things, and I didn't know what they were. What I found really interesting, though, was that these cells that were resident in the brain in an Alzheimer's patient lit up with this marker that said, I'm involved in an inflammatory response. And that was, that was big news. What is inflammation about? What is, what do you, why does your body have it? Well, your body uses inflammation to rid itself of foreign invaders and abnormal molecules and toxins, things like bacteria and viruses. Those stimulate inflammation when they're present in the brain where, or, or anywhere in your body where they shouldn't be, and inflammatory molecules and cells move into that area and attack and cleanse the body of those foreign invaders or foreign material. Amyloid beta peptide is clearly abnormal. It's almost like a splinter in your brain, and you've got thousands of them, and so you're going to have an inflammatory attack as the inflammatory cells move in and try to get that out of the brain. We stain the amyloid here with a brown stain and look in the bellies of the microglia. They're full of the amyloid. They actively eat this stuff up. And that's, that's what you would expect in an efficient uh, inflammatory response. You attack things and you clear them and remove them from the body. Obviously, in the Alzheimer's patient, uh, this may be working, but it's not working well enough because the patient's have thousands and thousands of microscopic amyloid deposits. But we suspected that this process was ongoing. It was just a tough, tough assignment for the microglia because, for one thing, amyloid is so very insoluble. 
Inflammation is always a two-headed sword. Uh, it destroys, and that's beneficial. Uh, when you have foreign invaders, inflammation destroys those foreign invaders. The problem is it can also destroy healthy tissue in the process, so you've got to be very careful about that. Let me give you an example. When you cut your finger, you may get some dirt and bacterium in the cut, and the cut then becomes inflamed. You have inflammation as inflammatory molecules and cells move in to cleanse the wound. And that's how inflammation does it. It's not magic. Inflammation just destroys everything in sight. So the, the dirt and the bacteria, they're attacked and removed. And if there are any healthy cells in the way, they get attacked and removed at the same time. Now, this bad side effect in most of your body isn't such a big deal. You grow new skin cells and muscle cells every day. So you can quickly put back the innocent bystander healthy cells that got killed by inflammation in the process of cleansing this wound. Over time, this is going to, we believe, uh, kill a lot of brain cells and, a, and particularly a lot of the processes, the nerve fibers that connect nerve cells uh, over time. It will take some time because it's a low-grade inflammation but we think that it is one of the major causes of damage in Alzheimer's disease. Our tissue bank gets brain samples so quickly after death that we are able to harvest living cells. After you die, a number of different cell types in your brain, microglia in particular, will live on for a couple of hours. And we have developed techniques to get them out of the brains of, of patients who've recently died and keep them alive in a test tube. And we can use them then to find out what the cells in any Alzheimer's brain were doing. We're just looking at one, one piece of, uh, of the brain. And there's probably about, usually about 14 or 15 slabs. And uh, this is just one slab. It's uh, right frontal cortex. The story here is that we can use these cells as a living target. If you get the flask and uh, sure. show us, I think, live, that would be good. So what do we got here? Here we got happy nerve cells, a lot of connections. You're right, I mean, that's one of the things that we know that nerve cells like to do is make connections with each other and they do that when they're healthy and happy. Okay, so what if we put uh, these same nerve cells uh, together with microglia? And what if we add amyloid to this mix? What do we see? Ah, wow. So here, the microglial cells have puffed up. They're much bigger. They're filling with little vessels that contain digestive juices, so to speak. The most important thing here is the connections between the nerve cells that were so vivid in the previous image, they're gone. They're just gone. And this parallels very closely, actually, what is seen in the Alzheimer's brain. When we combine those two, microglia, and we let the amyloid activate them into an inflammatory state, make them angry, we get damage to nerve cells.